Are you being love? Are you being loved? <laughs> Let it shine and don't hold back. I'd like to ask each of you a question. If you would quietly respond in your own mind. How are you? Now if you would join me and if it's all right, close your eyes. And as you consciously breathe in, say in your mind, I. I. And as you breathe out, am. I am. I am. And now if you could take the I am and within your mind move yourself to the most wonderful place in nature that you can imagine. Maybe it's on top of a mountain. Maybe it's at a beach at sunset. Maybe it's near a lake or a stream. But now take the I am to this most beautiful setting. And again, I am. And now may I ask again, how are you? If you'd like to bring yourself back into the room. I'm curious by a raising of the hand, is there any contrast between the first time I asked? Did you feel that change within you? As I mentioned in the last lesson that I gave, that power of your mind has chemically changed what you have going on in your body. The power of your mind in this present moment. It's where transformation begins, which as you know, is our theme for 2016. So now the question is, based on your spiritual practice, how often do you leverage that power of your mind to change your experience in the present moment? That's a part of our mission here, to share, to teach, to be with one another to leverage the power of our mind to change that experience so that we may transform our life. David, if you could pull up the uh, Ernest Holmes. Okay, that's fine. Just leave that there. So Ernest Holmes, our founder and philosopher of the science of mind, has a quote in the book called Creative Mind, and he was obviously quite an author, so this, this one's not as popular as many of the other books you may have heard from him. But quote, he says, we have within us a power that is greater than anything we shall ever contact in the outer. 
a power that can overcome every obstacle in our life, set us safe, satisfied, at peace, healed, prosperous, in a new light and in a new life. Mind, with a capital M. All mind is right here, right now. It's the mind of God. It's the creative power. It's God's creative life expressing in and as through you. And we have as much of this power to use in our daily life as we can believe in and embody. So today's lesson, bridging your past and your future by being in the now. The greatest power is never in your past or in your future. But how often do you hang out there? Your greatest power is always in the present moment should you choose to be conscious of that power. Now for most of us, we're very comfortable letting our mind chatter all the time. Chatter about how busy we are, chatter about how victimized we are, or whatever your old tapes play. Anybody familiar with that chatter? <laughs> no. In the book, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, I loved when he said, if you heard someone else speaking out loud, that voice in your head, you probably wouldn't choose them as a roommate. <laughs> And yet they're closer than any roommate could ever be. <laughs> Is that voice in your head your friend? Is that voice kind, gentle, peaceful, loving, non judgmental, and supportive of you all the time? Perhaps that's the place where we all begin spiritual practice. So typically the chatter in your mind is really a habit. And I, last lesson I talked about the subconscious mind. And in the subconscious mind, we're basically bringing up many times the past, even things that we don't even realize that come from our childhood or experiences that we experienced before without our total awareness. And again, it's reacting at, based on things that are happening around you. Um, and without your total awareness or consciousness, it is playing out. Now, our, the oldest part of our brain, meaning evolution-wise, is the uh, instinctual brain and the limbic brain, the emotional brain. And that served us well because, of course, when we were in the jungle or in nature, we needed to be able to remember lots of different things to survive, including, you know, run when the tiger comes or whatever the, <laughs> the response is to that. But that's not where your power is. The more evolved part of our brain is the neocortex, which is the front part of our brain. And I'm just reading lots of materials that continue to say, in this very time, we have more power than ever before collectively to bring peace on Earth. But that means being able to understand and allow ourselves to be in the present moment and realize we're not being chased by that tiger. We're not having that traumatic experience that happened in our past. And that we don't need to worry about the future because here we are, safe, present, loved, right where we are right now. And when we are able to connect and become aware of that present moment of just being, the neocortex is the place where we become self-aware. 
where we have free will and choice, making us potentially the master of our brain rather than let the brain continue with the chatter. In other words, while you have the power to use your mind for good, we typically habitually just let the tape run. How many times do you think you repeat the same things in your mind that you heard when you before? A lot. Stop. I know that's not easy, it's a practice. You might say the brain is the body of your car and the brain will keep you moving, but the power of your mind with a capital M can be your driver, not in the sense of pushing you, but again in making the free choice to be conscious and aware in the present moment. So let me ask you a question. Can you change your past by being in the present? I got, a, I got a few no's and I got a couple of yeses, yeah? Scientists have shown you remember what you want to remember and with time your memories can and do change. Now that doesn't change when I, when I ask you the question, can you change your past? It doesn't chase, cha change the facts. But it can change your perception. And just like when we did the little exercise of the I am and then taking the I am to this beautiful place, you can change the emotional and chemical response in your body to what happened in the past. Have you ever been in the middle of a bad situation and later in your life realized it might be the best thing that ever happened to you? Anybody? <laughs> what changed? Perception. Perception. Because the past didn't change. And I know a lot of times in form, we want to make things make sense and be rational. But if we're in the present moment and we're aligned with our truth, the form doesn't matter. And I'll describe what I mean going forward. Um, I've got an exercise I want everybody to do with me. So if it's easy for you, can I ask you to please stand? Okay. A little bit of change in chemistry there. <laughs> in a minute, I'm going to say on your mark, get set, go. Okay. When I say go, I want you to use your arms to point one arm in the direction of your past and one arm in the direction of your future. And you don't need to do that fast. Pay attention to your surroundings so you don't poke anybody. <laughs> okay? <laughs> On your mark, get set, go. Okay, take a look around. Take a look around. I like some of the answers. <laughs> All right, put your arms down. Based on what you saw, you've got another opportunity. On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> okay, I see lots of change, great. All right, you can sit. <laughs> I love that exercise. <laughs> so what's the right answer? That's a good question. <laughs> a true philosopher, Sharon. <laughs> what? 
What's the right answer? Perspective. Multiple dimensions. But I want to ask you, what's at the center of all of those directions? Choice. Your body. Yep, your, 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 your body metaphorically, but you are centered in the present moment from whatever dimension, past or present, or uh, past or future. So really, it's a perspective that bridges your past and your future. Let's take a look at perspective. And I forgot to tell you there is sound, but we don't need the sound per se. So if you'll just play the mu movie. OK. Now going the other direction.
I'm curious, did that change your perspective? <laughs> I'm using my punchline early, but I think that's what Einstein meant about you can't solve the, sa the problem at the same kind of thinking that created the problem. Do you get a sense of infinite possibilities there when you go? I mean, that's just by powers of 10. But we tend to get stuck in our life, don't we sometimes? I, I hope you can use that visual that based on whatever your personal challenge is, that there are new perceptions that allow for transformation in the present moment. We tend to think of a, in a linear view, and um, Thich Nhat Hanh says, the present moment contains past and future, because there really is no time in the mind of God. The secret of transformation is in the way we handle this very moment. So do you live the story today that you want to tell? Can I have you raise the um, screen, please? So the science of mind uses in the back of the Science of Mind textbook, it's a big circle, but you can think of the circle just being that infinity that you saw way out there in space, unlimited possibilities. And the V represents that at the top, it is open. It is all possibilities. It's God, higher power, whatever words you use to choose. And that we use that mind, hopefully consciously, not subconsciously, to plant seeds into the soil. And that's why we usually have those lines that go through there sort of de denote soil, which is your soul. So we use the big cosmic mind, capital M, as we plant seeds in the soil of our soul. And we come to the bottom where we have an outpicturing in our mind. And of course, we always use the seed and the plant. The seed is the thought that's planted in the soil that is fertilized and becomes the plant in form. And this form is where we get stuck. And form is usually what we're seeing. And we're so used to that, that becoming our reality that we forget to go back to the I am to the present moment, to those infinite possibilities. And again, I keep using that video because for me it sticks in, oh yeah, there are so many more perspectives and dimensions. There is not the right way. And regardless of what your experience in your life has been, there are things to cultivate from your past. And I know sometimes that's not easy. And sometimes the present moment is not easy depending on what's happening in your life right now. But you have the power to do your spiritual practice. The power to use your mind to bring yourself back to the bigger perspective, which is what we do with spiritual mind treatment, right? We have several different tools in the science of mind, meditation and, and treatment, uh, spiritual mind treatment, which is our form of affirmative prayer, are just two of those tools. And in spiritual mind treatment, we tell ourselves to begin first with God or higher power, whatever your most divine thought, whatever the highest good that you can imagine, because you are one with that. And when you unify yourself with that, you open yourself up to more possibilities and you get out of the form and back into what is really reality in your mind.
Thich Nhat Hanh says, people have a hard time letting go of suffering. Out of a fear of the unknown, they prefer suffering that is familiar. And that's what our subconscious mind does to us, right? When it replays over and over and over the same thing. It's familiar. And for some of us, most of us, a lot of us, it takes discipline to do our spiritual practice. To bring ourselves back into the truth and align ourselves with that truth. Love, light, peace, power, beauty, joy, unlimited possibilities. So we must return to our higher power, which means becoming centered. And this is where I like to say spiritual mind treatment is me talking to God and meditation is God talking to me. And I have to say to you that sometimes I need to get my own thinking out of the way. And that's where meditation comes in, in, in quieting our mind, but you don't beat yourself up because your mind continues to chatter. You just observe that chatter and bring yourself back to quietness. And observe that chatter and bring yourself back to quietness. And with enough practice, you'll be surprised what shows up for you. So meditation is the place to become comfortable in the calm, in a peaceful, stable place of truth. All right. So in wrapping it up, I'm going to start with, uh, in the wrap up, my last week was quite a taxing week. So first let me talk about it in form. I have... Uh, we have a 13 and a half year old dog, large dog, and we thought we were gonna have to put her to sleep last Friday night. Anybody been through that pain? Compassion immediately felt. And uh, so we were at the vet for three hours and um, via x-rays they couldn't find anything wrong even though she couldn't get up. So we went back home with pain meds thinking, well, if it's a sprain or something like that. The next day, she perked up, but still couldn't get up. And she's a 78-pound dog, right? It's about the same weight as my partner, if you don't know. And I, and I say that for a reason. Because on Saturday, it was like, this is not getting better. But we can't take her this time. <laughs> we had gotten so much help to take her to the vet Friday night that we invited a, um, a, a mobile vet to come. And of course, spiritual practice is happening for me, being in the present moment and knowing that if I have to put her down, just enjoying the present, enjoying the love that we share with each other in the way that animals share that love. And the mobile vet was absolutely outstanding. And she said, you know, I see in your dog still this nature of not yet giving up, so I'm going to give you stronger pain meds. Well, the difficulty was that I was packing up my daughter to move someplace else down at UCLA. And so my partner was going to have to take care of a dog who wasn't moving. So that was sort of a dilemma. How do we do this? I mean, she's got a job, etc. And so my partner and I are trying to figure out what we're going to do about the dog. You know, can't be outside all day. It's going to be close to 100 degrees. Meanwhile, I'm loading up the truck with my daughter. You know, <laughs> mattresses, desks, all kinds of stuff. We get, we think we're taking off early Sunday morning. No, we take off at a time of guess what we're going to hit in L.A. <laughs> Traffic in a big moving truck, right? Not ideal. But... Okay, eight hours down Highway 5 in a big truck, and then we get there about, I don't know, 6.30, and now we've got to move <laughs> stuff out of the big truck. Okay, do you get the trauma drama? <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a lot of that. But I'm going to say to you that I am just so grateful for my spiritual practice. Because I kept reminding myself to be in the present moment. Because that's, that's where the power was. And my dog is up and about. 
and and you know she is 13 and a half but um, her spirit is so there she she asked me to take her for a walk last night but she's still a little fragile she just so bad wants to go and my daughter is um, doing amazingly well at UCLA and my partner made it through um, you know the week and I I just kept being grateful I had eight hours with my daughter I mean how often do you get that when they're in college and have jobs and and um, you know just got to continue to how much I appreciate my family my dog my daughter where she's at and all the goodness and then it reminded me, um, and I don't remember which book because I'm reading about five of them right now. <laughs> One book had said, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Do you feel that shift? Yes. So in closing, I want to encourage you to make this your spiritual goal or challenge. To be as comfortable with just being in the moment as you are with doing. To be as comfortable with just being as you are with doing. I think you will find that the power of being in the present moment is indeed transforming. Namaste.